Hi everyone, welcome to Virtual Second Sunday. My name is Mackenzie and I am an art educator at the Cantor Art Center. I have two other incredible art educators joining me today, Diane and Aubrey. We've temporarily closed our museum doors to help keep our community healthy. However, we're excited to provide you with digital resources on our website where you can continue to explore the Cantor and the Anderson. Every second Sunday of the month, the museums create art projects for visitors to make in the museums. And since today is the second Sunday of the month, we'll be taking our art making virtual. You can download the PDF instructions for today's art project on the Cantor Museums from Home webpage. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Today's project is called Create a Collection. It's inspired by the idea that although we can't visit the museum's art collection in person right now, we have the ability to make our own collection using collage. Now Diane will take us step by step through the art making process. Thank you, Mackenzie. Hello everyone and welcome to Second Sunday. Let's make some art together. Drop-in Studio is all about thinking like an artist. First, we will need to collect our supplies. You will need a magazine or catalog that is ready for recycling so that you can tear out the pages and grab pictures that interest you. Scissors, glue or tape, and a piece of paper or cardboard to use as the base for your project. All collage begins with collecting. For this collage, we will be collecting pieces of paper with pictures that we find interesting. Start by quickly gathering as many pictures as you can. You can sort the pictures later when you can take time to cut them into smaller shapes. I have already begun cutting out shapes and arranging them on my paper. As you can see here. But first I want to tell you the story of my yellow collage. I could only find one catalog in the whole house. So I cut out all the shoes and feet in the catalog and put them in a box. I noticed that I was cutting out all the little shoes into triangle shapes. I kept cutting more and more triangles. I began putting all the triangles together like a mosaic and then I tried to fit the big shoes on the page. I stopped to think about what I had made so far and saw that all the triangles combined to make one big shape that looked to me like the, like the bottom half of a person, sort of. I saw that the space between the triangles seemed to create a sense of movement or action, as if the triangles were trying to either fall apart or trying to stick together. Also, the way I placed the big shoes on the page made them look like they are trying to run away. Now I wonder, am I finished? I don't want to fill up the whole page because I like the white space. Artists call this part negative space. It's also part of the composition. And it serves to accent the action of the yellow part, which is the positive space. So finally, I gave my collage a title. It's called Yellow Shoes. A title is helpful when you want to remember an artwork. Now I'm ready to start a new collage. And I would also like to introduce you and tell you a little about my favorite collage artist. The first artist I would like to show you is Hannah Hooker. In eight, she was born in 1889 in Germany, and this is her artwork called Little Sun. She made it in 1969. I first saw her collages in an art museum show, and I was so amazed that I read about as much of her work as I could. 
and I became fascinated by her story. Another artist that I really admire is Wangeshe Mutu. One of her collages was in a Cantor exhibition recently, and I got a chance to look closely at her artwork and enjoy all the amazing details. Now let's compare these two collages. How are they alike? Well, I think if you were here with me, you would say they both have faces. And the way the artist put these faces on was just by cutting out shapes from a magazine. And you can see that they use simple shapes to represent the faces as well. This one is sort of a round circle, like the sun, which has an eye and a mouth on it. That makes us think of a face. And this one has two eyes and a mouth and an ear. And then she has cut out these long snake shapes to represent hair. I think these are so much fun to look at and I'm inspired by these artists. I also noticed that she used a triangle shape just like I did for my yellow shoes. I love making connections with artists I admire. This is so much fun. So let's continue to make some more collages. Here's a collage that I just started working on. I collected a bunch of shoes and socks up here and just lined them up in a row. And then I found these colorful shoes and I thought they would make a good flower. So I attached some stems, which are made out of legs and feet. I don't think this work is quite finished. I think this space needs something in it. I'm not sure yet, so I'm going to put it aside until I can figure out what I want to add. I might discover more things later while I'm looking for more shapes. Here's another piece I just started. You can see I started collecting red shoes and boots right on the bottom. But look, there's also some legs sprouting out the top. Now what happens if I turn it around the other way? It's different and now it looks like it's running away just like the yellow collage. It's funny when your piece of your artwork starts to make connections too. I want to make a lot more collages. So I'm going to continue cutting out pieces of paper and putting and arranging them on my new sheet. You can join me. Please start cutting along and Mackenzie will remind us when it's time to go to our next presenter. Thank you and have a lot of fun. Thank you, Diane. Now we'll hear from Aubrey. Hi everyone. Now that we've started making, I thought it would be nice to share my collage too. I made it a little earlier. I'm going to take you through it slowly and let you see everything. Collages are so fun because they let you use so many different types of materials. We're using paper today, but you could also use fabric or string or buttons or maybe a combination of everything. I was really excited to find animals in mine. Cats are my favorite animals, so I really wanted to make a collage centered on them. So I have a cat head right here. This is a cat brain. I was specifically interested in finding things that reminded me of my cat at home. My cat, when he sleeps, likes to stretch his paws out as far as possible. And the lobster kind of reminded me of that. And although this is a picture of a dog, the hump that the cutout ended up making reminded me of how my cat looks when he sits down. And I added a little tail just to remind me what I was going for. I hope that you'll be able to find and make something that you really love too. I also want to share collages that have been made, have been made by artists in the Cantor collection. Even though you can't visit the museum right now, please know that you can still see our art online. All you have to do is go on museum.stanford.edu and then click on the collection tab to find any piece that you might be looking for. I decided, because of what we're doing today, to look at collaging, and I found some great pieces. The first one is titled Sea Snail by Robert Motherwell. I'm gonna let you see it up close. There are some key differences between what Motherwell was doing and what we're doing. The biggest one being that he ripped his paper instead of cutting it out like we are. Do you see the little frayed edges over here and along here? That's from ripping it. But he decided to use shapes like rectangles to make a shape that we, to make a new shape, the snail. 
it might not look like a snail in this direction, but maybe if we were to tilt it this way, maybe this little rectangle is the snail shell, and this is the underbelly of the snail. Could be. I, we can compare this to another artist who has also made a collage snail. His name is Henri Matisse, and his piece is called The Snail. These are super different, right? Matisse has a whole bunch of color in his, whereas Motherwell doesn't have as much. And Matisse actually ended up cutting out his rectangles, whereas Motherwell decided to rip them. But they're both collages, and they're both in museums. Your art can look totally different from your parents, or your siblings, or your friends, even if you're working with the same subject matter, and both will be beautiful in different ways. Although I do wonder, what is so interesting about snails? I'm truly not sure myself, but I'm so glad that these artists found inspiration in it. I want to show you one more piece from our collection as well. This one is called Self-Portrait and Birds by Alan Ruppersberg. Isn't this one so fun? Here, I'll, let, I'll go in closer so you can see what we're do dealing with. We have a ton of birds on the top and then the self-portrait on the bottom. I don't know about you, but to me, it looks a little bit like a gray blob until I tilt it this way. And then I can see a person's face. We have the neck here and the hair that's going all along. And then we have a nose, lips, and a chin. Do you see it? But the artist decided to do it this way. I wonder why. Maybe the artist had like the best sleep of his life and was dreaming. And in his dream, he saw a flock of birds overhead. Or maybe he was lying down on a summer day and he looked up and he saw a whole bunch of birds flying over his head. Either way, it makes me think that maybe you should be careful about how you orient your art too. Do you want to do it this way or this way? Do you want it at an angle? There's really no wrong way to do it. So I hope you have so much fun with it. I also just love the birds here. There's so many of them and they look like they're cut out from magazines, kind of like how we do, are doing it right here. He has such a large collection of birds in this piece. I feel like having a collection is one of the first steps of collaging. A collection is a group of items that can be alike, maybe like these beads that you might use to make jewelry, or different. I found some items around my house that I might want to use to make a different collage later. We have this fun little circular cutout, we have a hair thing, we have some fun paper pieces, a coin, and collections don't have to be just for art making. It can be for lots of things. For example, all the items that you see in a museum are considered part of the museum's collection. For me, I like to collect Pokemon cards. I started playing Pokemon when I was really little and my siblings were all really into it. As you can see, all the cards are the same shape on the back and they all have the same design, right? But then they all show different Pokemon on them. And I like to categorize mine based on type. So I have the grass type over here, I have the dark type over here, I have water type, I have electric, I have fighting, I have normal type, and I try and keep them all categorized based on their type, just to make it easier for when I'm looking for a particular card. My absolute favorite card is definitely Bulbasaur, because he was my first starter Pokemon when I started playing the game, and I just think he's so cute. I don't know, he's just wonderful. Maybe you can start thinking about what you have collections of too. That's all I have for you today, but I hope you have so much fun making and I'm so glad that I got to connect with you like this. Thank you, Aubrey. Now I'll share with you my collection of dice. I found them in game sets, some were at stores, and some were given to me by friends. This one right here is actually an eraser. My favorite one is this one and it's translucent green. I love it because green is my favorite color, but also you can sort of see through it. I love how they're all different shapes and sizes, and they're also made out of different materials. When I look at my collection, sometimes I'll arrange it in different ways. So I might arrange it right now by color. I have these kind of big yellow ones right here. So I'll stack them on top of each other. Have all these green ones as well. And then I also have a lot of these orange. Voila! When I think of collections, I am also reminded about the exhibit that was at the Cantor Arts Center. Here's an image of it. 
It was created by the artist Mark Dion, who looked at over 700 objects in the Cantor's collection and rearranged them in different categories. We've got earth, air, ether, water, and fire. Maybe I will arrange my collection like it and I could put a dice right there. Another collage artist that I find really inspiring is Fran Rodriguez. I especially love her, her, her work because of how playful and how funny it can be. This right here is a swing set, except it's not on a normal playground, it's in outer space. I love how this is totally impossible in real life, but then through the power of collage and an artist's imagination, it can become possible. This is another collage artist that I admire and look to for inspiration for today's project. His name is Vic Muniz, and his artwork is of a very famous artwork um, called By Michelangelo, and it's on the Sistine Chapel. It looks like this. However, he didn't use painting. Instead, what he used is he used collage pieces of lots of different little items of trash. So if you look closely, you can see the tire and you can see bits of plastic. And I love the relationship between part and whole, how it's made up of all these small parts of trash. And yet when you look at it all at once together, it makes a bigger piece of artwork. Here's the project that I made today. When I was doing it, I was flipping through magazines and I was really drawn to items of food. Perhaps this is because I was really hungry when I was making my project. I found some pizza, I found some apples that I stacked together, also lots of vegetables. And what I did was I arranged all the vegetables together so that I had this human shape right here. And then I put all the rest of the food around it as if it were at a big feast. I was thinking about all these concepts when I was making my collage. And we hope that you too are inspired by our examples that we've given here today. Thank you, Diane and Aubrey, for your amazing presentations. And thank you for all of you all who are watching us for joining us here today. We've had such an amazing time making this art project with you. You can share your art by tagging us on social media using at Cantor Arts and the hashtag Second Sunday, or by emailing your artwork to Cantor underscore education at stanford.edu. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Have a great day.